Christ is risen. Christus was crescent. My dear brothers and sisters, please be seated. Have you been noticing lately that when you wear a mask, somehow it's harder to see and hear and touch? Why is that? When one of our senses is impaired, something's not quite right. And this is vastly more true even with our spiritual sense. What have we been talking about these last few weeks? Right after Pascha, we heard about doubting. We heard about myrrh-bearing women anointing a body that had died. We heard about a paralytic. We heard about a Samaritan woman who was married many, many times. Today, we hear about a blind man. Why are these Gospels here? St. John is telling us that in this great time of Pascha, we are to be reminded of our limitations on the one hand, and our unique call by God on the other. Notice what happens in the Gospel today, according to St. John. Jesus comes, and he sees the blind man, and he cures him. And what is the first thing out of people's mouths? Well, how could he do that? He's a sinful man. This is the Sabbath. He can't do it now. Instead of wondering who it is that is sitting before us, kneeling before us, standing before us, and in our midst. Rather than looking past their own prejudices, we might say, they look inside at that well, that deep well of pride that is constantly full in all of us. Do we not find a piece of wood in someone else's eye instead of looking in our own? Do we not constantly make comments and petty gossip? Are we not constantly in conversation about those people over there could be better? We could be better. I definitely could be better. And by better, we don't mean some sort of secular sense of human achievement. Generic things like healing and, and growing and doing and, 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 and knowledge and activity. These are human things. These are earthbound things. What also are we getting in this arc after Pascha? That we have seen God with our own eyes. But dear brothers and sisters, this hardly crosses our mind, right? There were people that walked this earth who saw the second person of the Trinity in the flesh, right there, right there. And in a time where we're being told, don't touch, don't speak, don't gather, what did they do? They rushed to Jesus' side put their hands on his garments, tried to embrace him, tried to get near him, tried to talk to him. We are called to be the Christ to others. Not that we ourselves are God, forget that. Because there's lots of lines of thought that try to make you feel like you're God. All of us, right? But we have to show that to others. Not by being perfect, because that's the other pole of all this. That we should be perfect, perfect, perfect. We should be repentant. We should be humble before each other, meek before God, and open to his will. And people say, Father, what does that mean? I don't know. It means that you have to take time to be silent before God. You have to be in his presence. And if you do that, I promise you, he will. You will hear. And if you don't understand, come ask. You will see. And if you don't understand, come ask. Each and every moment of our lives, 
are to be sitting in the well of forgiveness that Christ gives us. The icon right over here by the tomb is the one of extreme humility. And look where Jesus is. He's inside, is he not? He's in the tomb, is he not? Our lives are to be spent partly in the tomb and partly on earth. Partly in the tomb because we're reminded we will die. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is not a horrible thing. And in our culture that doesn't understand it, we're obsessed with death, we're obsessed with the occult, and sort of supernatural things, but somehow we shy away when we say, from dust we came and to dust we will return. This body is weak, is it not? Our minds are weak, are they not? Our hearts are weak, are they not? So let our spirit be strong. We have to partake of the divine liturgy. It feeds us. It gives us knowledge. It gives us prayer. It gives us community. It gives us a check on our ego. Doing the liturgy as often as we priests do, we get constrained, right? And that's the intention of it. Get back here in this box. Get back here before the dread judgment seat. Get back here in the tomb. Why? To remember that it is not all the accomplishments that we do here. And it doesn't mean that we can't do good things and we can't thrive and we can't have those kinds of successes or whatever. But what it means is in everything you do, you have to glorify God in it. We have to love Him, be in love with God. Whether we are blind, whether we are doubtful, whether we are shameful, we know we're all guilty, right? So let's stop pointing fingers and let's start saying, hey, listen, we're in this boat together. Don't forget, a parish church, another name for it is the bark of Peter. Bark being another word for boat, ship. That's why they're built in the certain way that they are. Who's at the helm? Okay. Who's pulling up the anchor? Because parishes can weigh themselves down and make it not about God. I was reminded by a very wise man recently, the great Father Alexander Schmemann, a Russian Orthodox priest, helped found, you know, um, St. Vladimir Seminary, and he taught there, and he helped build up the OCA. And he said a priest's job is not to serve the parish. The priest's job is to get the parish to serve God. Those are very different things, right? And then I look up into the heavens and say, are you kidding me, right? I'm unworthy. I don't stand up here and say, oh, I'm great and wonderful. You should all listen to me. No, I'm the worst sinner. And I come before God and I say, yeah, help me, save me. Bring a more worthy person here. But every day he says, Father, get up and go. Get up and go. Just like all of you. You have to get up and you go. And many of you do. I'm preaching to the choir here, right? We're still not over past the pandemic thing. It's sort of weird. Some things are open, some are not. Some are partial, some are not. And we're finding our ways through this. But together, we can see the path. We can see the light. Say, hey, you. Do you see that over there? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, that's the light of Christ. This Thursday, we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. If you can come, 9 a.m., we do it a little earlier on weekdays, because normally people have things to go do, right? But come and be a part of that. We're getting ever closer to Pentecost. Not that long off. Sunday, June 7th, in here. And what do we get? The descent of the Holy Spirit. And when we know that, when we see it, when we feel it, when we have it, we say, you know what, I'm gonna be different. For all of us who are old enough to remember 9-11, right? We're all going to be different. We're all going to be different. We're all going to be different. Well, how fast did everybody just be the same? This thing right now, we're all going to be different. Different. I'm going to be different. Really? Get up tomorrow morning and decide to be different.
the name of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. And that he bless all of you. In the name of the Father, 